This is Paul McGuire. You are listening to the Paul McGuire Report. On today's program, we're going to deal with where we are right at this moment prophetically. Prophetically in terms of what is happening in the United States of America and how this fits into God's end-time program, but also prophetically what's happening in the world and how that fits into God's end-time prophetic program. This is a very important program for you to prayerfully consider sending to people that need to know and to help spread the word. Because let me be very blunt. The overwhelming majority of Christians in America, so-called Bible-believing Christians, evangelical Christians, I'm being generous with this statistic, 74%, but the number is really higher, 74% of evangelical Christians in America are completely clueless about what is happening in America prophetically, and they're clueless as to what God is doing prophetically uh, across the world right now. In addition, there are countless millions of Christians in various European Union nations, and in places like Australia, New Zealand, Africa, uh, many other continents, India, China, South America, Canada, that are also clueless. Or if they're not clueless, they're hungry for information because they're not getting it from any place. So on today's edition of the Paul McGuire Report, we're going to give you a very important update about what God is doing prophetically in America and across the world. You need to hear the program. You need to understand what's going on because your future depends upon it and you have a vital role to play in what's happening. I don't understand why People who claim to read the Bible, or I don't think they read the Bible, but people who claim to uh, believe in the Bible, people who claim to call themselves Christians, have, have no clue. It's like they're blind to what is happening prophetically. We are in a time period like no other time in the history of mankind. Now, I understand that that's been said before. I'm not here to set dates. But we've never been in a time like this. The prophetic signs that are happening now have never happened before in the history of the human race. I was asked by uh, a fairly well-known, no, actually a very well-known Christian author, uh, why I thought, why, he said, Paul, why are you so passionate and insistent that We're in the last days, you know, close to the return of the Lord. And I answered him by saying, because there are so many things happening in our lifetime right now that have never happened before. And that would be things like the advent of all kinds of never before, uh, never before existed is a terrible uh, grammatical phrase, but they've never been around before. The invention of all these futuristic technologies and sciences in the realm of robotics and artificial intelligence and scientific mind control and weaponry, nuclear weapons, and so on and so forth, and um, science and technologies that deal with DNA transhumanism, androids, robots, cyborgs, economics. What is happening in the economic realm itself has never happened before in human history. So if you just pay attention to the data, just secular data, you would recognize that we're in a time period that has never happened before. And if you add to that, a basic understanding of what God's Word says from Genesis to Revelation. And by that, I mean a biblical worldview. Now, a biblical worldview is 
where we take the truths of the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation and we apply those truths uh, to every area of life, like the Bible speaks in enormous detail about economics. The Bible speaks in enorm enormous detail about governmental structures and politics and globalism. Yeah, globalism. The Bible speaks in great deal about it. The Bible speaks in great deal about sociology, the family unit, human sexuality, the environment. Now, a biblical worldview is something that Christians are commanded by God to teach people around the world and teach nations around the world. We don't have that because the average evangelical Christian, I don't mean to sound uh, sarcastic, and I'm certainly not trying to put down people. I hope you understand that. But it has to be said. It has to be said. I can't go around not saying it. I'm saying it as lovingly as I can. You notice that I'm refraining from naming individuals because I'm not on a, a witch hunt. This is a battle of ideas. And you have to understand that the evangelical church, which is the primary form of Christianity in the world today, has gone very far astray from the Bible over the last 40 years. And the average evangelical leader, seminary, Christian, pastor, church, media person, has no clue as to what um, Jesus Christ commands to you and I are all about. When Jesus Christ said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. That's part of the Great Commission. The Great Commission of Jesus Christ consists of going to all the world and preaching the gospel of salvation, winning souls for Jesus Christ, number one. Number two is making disciples of all nations. And number three is occupying the land until I come, or as other translations read, doing business until I come. The problem is the average Christian, including leaders, the heads of seminaries, don't, don't ask me how the heads of seminaries teach anything about uh, ministry because they don't understand <laughs> the, the very core of ministry. Let's go back to the, the worldview subject. Modern Christians, evangelical Christians, even in leadership, in denominations, in megachurches, in um, seminaries, have no idea what it means to communicate a biblical worldview to people. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ meant when he said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. What does making disciples of all nations mean? You see, most people think it means simply discipling individuals, you know, teaching them how to live like Christians and evangelize. And that's part of it. That's part of it. But that's only part of it. God didn't say ignore the rest of the meaning of making disciples of all nations. Notice he, he didn't say make disciples of all individuals. Because that's a one-on-one -on -one thing where discipleship would be mo uh, more focused. No, he said make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe my commandments. What does that mean? What does God mean by his commandments? God's commandments are far, far more than the commandments he gave in certain New Testament passages. They begin in the book of Genesis. So what you're doing is you're educating nations, cultures, individuals in what is called a biblical worldview. You're applying the truth of Scripture into every area of life that Scripture speaks about. You can't have a disconnect on that, or if you do have a disconnect on, on that, you end up with a very weird Christianity, which is what we have in the world today. You see, making disciples of all nations is where the rubber meets the road. 
It means teaching people from Genesis to Revelation how God's truths directly apply to every area of life. Human sexuality, the family, economics, organizational structures, genetics, DNA, health, biology, science, medicine, technology, communications. Um, that's just the tip of the iceberg. God's word, militaries, war, reconciliation, racism, social justice. God's word speaks extensively about all these areas. So when you walk in and you, you miniaturize the gospel, what do I mean by miniaturizing the gospel? You, you, you shrink it down to this little small piece. And the word of God is not a small piece. God speaks about so many areas of life in depth in the holy word of God, which is Genesis to Revelation. But if all you do is take a little tiny fraction of that, you're not making disciples of all nations. You know what you're doing? You're not teaching your congregation the Bible. A denomination is not instructing properly its leadership, its pastors. A seminary is completely failing in its responsibility. In fact, any Christian educational institution that does not understand totally what a biblical worldview is in relationship to making disciples of all nations is failing at the job of education, of discipleship, of transformation, and most importantly, failing at the assignment that God has given us. Because Jesus Christ said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. But he wasn't just talking about the truth of salvation and heaven and hell. Certainly, that's probably the most important truth. But just because you teach the most important truth never gives you the right to ignore all the other truths in the Bible. This is why Christianity has lost its power in our culture. Because it has been artificially turned into an aberration of what the original gospel was. The Bible talks about economics, sexuality, family, government, so many areas. And what we're supposed to be doing is ramping it up. You see, we live in a culture where everybody has been dumbed down. And the reason they've been dumbed down, and if you had a biblical worldview, you would know instantly why they've been dumbed down. The reason people have been dumbed down is because in order to control a nation or a population or a group of people, you historically, the way totalitarian governments exercise total control over populations is that they first scientifically dumb them down through the educational process and through the media. And after they've dumbed them down, um, then people will just follow orders without questioning. They will be compliant. When they're dumbed down, they enthusiastically become slaves. They enthusiastically follow orders without questions. Totalitarian governments love dumbed-down people because they can't rule without first making the people they're ruling dumbed down. So American education, which is based on the philosophical foundation of secular humanism and socialism from the very beginning, does not believe in God, does not believe in Jesus, but believes in humanism, that man is God, and it believes in a world socialist state, which is a world where there is no God and man rules. And it's, it's an antichrist system. 
And, 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 and you say, well, how do you, why do you say that, Paul? Because if you're even, min I, this is not a meant to be arrogant, but if you're even minimally educated, you understand because the, the, the creators, the designers, the founders of education in America, the modern public education system, and in Europe, wrote extensively documents and books and announced for anybody who chose to see. It was not done in, in secret. It was not done in a hidden manner. They wrote what their agenda was, what their plan was, and how they were going to do it. So it shouldn't have been a surprise when public education began to be the very thing that its founders said it was going to be. Now, this uh, raises the question, well, where were the Christian leaders? Where, where were the Christian seminaries equipping ministers to deal with this transformation? Where were the Christian pastors? Where were the Christian denominations? I'll tell you where they were. They were out to lunch like they are now. They were clueless. They were out in their little religious bubble playing games. And that's where they are today. Because these men, listen carefully, and what you hear in my voice is not anger. It is very strong concern about danger that's ahead. What these educators said right from the beginning, like John Dewey, who is called the father of modern public education. John Dewey was educated in communist Russia a little bit before 1917. He was trained in communist Russia, which was heavily into programming and mind control. The KGB were into all those kinds of things. So John Dewey, who was the founder of the modern public educational system in the United States, was trained by communists in communist Russia on how to set up a communist-style educational system. And what would that have been? Well, communism is a system that is militantly does not believe in God. It believes the state is God. It militantly does not believe in private property. And that means it doesn't believe in marriage. It doesn't believe in capitalism. It doesn't believe in religion or hard work. You say, well, how can you say it doesn't believe in marriage? Because under communism, you don't have the right to own anything. And the communists believe that uh, uh, a marriage relationship between a man or a woman, where they exclusively pledge to be faithful to one another and only have a sexual relationship with one another and nobody else, and then they uh, reproduce and have children, the children belong to them. This is all against communist teaching, because communist teaching says you should be promiscuous. You should be immoral because it should be free sex. A woman or a man shouldn't even look at their partners anywhere near the terms of ownership for their children. Their children, the parents, the wives, the husbands should be encouraged to be free to sleep around as much as they want because there's no such thing as uh, monogamy. That's a capitalist institution. Okay, number two is uh, communism hates Christianity. In every communist revolution, the first thing you do is you destroy Christianity, you destroy the marriage unit, you destroy Christian values, you destroy traditional uh, morality, and you destroy patriotism. So this is the man who sets up our educational system, a trained communist agent. And so the purpose of the public educational system was simply to replicate what happened in communist Russia right from the beginning. And that was, according to their own words, to educate or indoctrinate or brainwash. And yes, they use the words brainwash. To brainwash American children going through public education and, and brainwashing them to no longer believe in Christianity or God or Jesus, to brainwash them into no longer believing in the traditional family unit, to brainwash them into 
uh, not believing in traditional moral values, to brainwashing them into not uh, accepting traditional Christian morality, brainwashing them into not believing in uh, patriotism, uh, the value of the Constitution or the Bill of Rights, and not to believe in nationalism or independent sovereign nations. Okay, And that's what we see playing out with the millennials. It's taken many generations, but they've made great progress. Essentially, education was designed to be a mind control factory to obliterate any Judeo-Christian belief system. And that's what we have. That's what's been going on. Now, the question I have to ask, since this was all announced openly, it was all a matter of public record. And since all of these things, because remember, at its very root, communism, Marxism, socialism is an antichrist system. Karl Marx, the co-author of the Communist Manifesto, wasn't an atheist like he claimed to be. He was a Satanist. He was a member of a satanic church and many others that were high up in the communist revolution in terms of leadership. They weren't atheists like they claimed to be. They were members of occult groups and Satanism and all kinds of things. So my question is this regarding the Christian leaders. This is such an attack against God and God's people, and Christianity, and the teachings of Jesus Christ. This is a full-on war against the teachings of Christ. This is something motivated by the spirit of Antichrist. How is it? How is it that any Christian leader, any Christian pastor, any denomination, any seminary, any church, could have stood by, which they did, there were some exceptions, by the way. There were some exceptions. How could they have stood by and done nothing while uh, the spirit of Antichrist destroyed the educational process? Because, you see, the teaching of the theory of evolution was a tenet of communism, not because evolution is true. Evolution has never even remotely been proven to be true. It's a mythology. But it serves a purpose because it tells children and people who don't think very deeply that uh, the biblical account of creation can't possibly be true, which makes evolution an assault on the Word of God. There can't be a God because of evolution. And it also destroys morality because it says that every man and woman alive is here by random chance, evolution, and accident. You, do you understand? Totally here by random chance. And that might makes right. And that um, um, the fittest survive. And that there is no God. There is no right or wrong. There is no morality. These are the things that communism teaches. So the question is, how did all these Christian leaders stand idly by and watch this happen? How did it happen? And wouldn't you say that the fact that Christian leaders stood idly by, did nothing and watched that happen? Wouldn't you say that they're accountable before God or completely failing in their duties as watchmen? Let's stop playing religious games. In the Bible, God raises up watchmen. And by the way, let's not mystify a watchman. A watchman is a Christian leader. Whether he functions in the area of being a pastor or a Bible teacher or a denominational head or a professor in a Christian seminary, uh, or, or whatever function he has, uh, all of those individuals also play the role of a watchman. Because the job of the watchman is to be in a high tower and see the enemy of God's people coming from a distance. So those in education should have a vantage point. They should be in a high tower by their position. 
The nominational heads should be in a high tower due to their position. Pastors of large churches should be in a watchtower due to their high position. And heads of denominations, due to their position, should be in a high tower. Their jobs before God is to keep an alert out for what could potentially happen to God's people. And so when they see the enemy of God's people coming, they blow the shofar or trumpet of warning while the enemy is still at a distance. And this gives an opportunity for uh, God's people to rouse themselves and prepare for battle. And so when the enemy comes in, they're, they're ready for the enemy. And so they can drive the enemy back. They can destroy the enemy. But if the watchman is asleep, and because he's asleep, he doesn't see the enemy coming, Thus, he fails to blow the trumpet of warning or the shofar. And because of his failure to blow the trumpet of warning, God's people end up getting slaughtered. The Lord said to the watchman, If you are faithful to be on the alert always and look for the enemy, and if you are faithful to blow the trumpet of warning, the shofar, and warn my people that the enemy is coming. Um, if the people hear you, God was delighted because they would be protected. But he said to the watchman, if you fall asleep or you're not paying attention and you fail to see the enemy coming and you fail to blow the trumpet and my people get slaughtered, God said, I will hold their blood uh, to your account. And then he also said, if you do faithfully warn the people that the enemy is coming, and you do blow the trumpet or shofar of warning, then I will uh, excuse you of any responsibility. You were faithful. You did your duty. And if my people just choose to rebel and ignore you, then their blood will be upon their own hands. Now, let's take this and transpose it to the issue of this uh, set up of a communistic educational system and indoctrination. It should have been obvious because it was public knowledge. It wasn't hidden. It should have been obvious to thousands of pastors, hundreds, if not thousands of denominational leaders, hundreds, if not thousands of professors and leaders in seminaries, denominations and churches and pastors and Christian authors, etc. It should have been obvious because it was publicly announced that the enemy was coming through this kind of educational system because they said their goal was to destroy Christianity, Christian marriage. I mean, they announced that they were coming to destroy Christianity and the teachings of Jesus Christ. They announced it publicly, all over the place. And yet, there was practically no watchmen that were, that were awake, not sleeping, not paying attention, faithful watchmen, pay attention. So all these Christian leaders were unfaithful to God. They weren't paying attention, even though it was publicly announced they failed to blow the trumpet of warning or the shofar. And as a result, over the last 50 years, millions of lives have been utterly destroyed. The work of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ has been harmed and hurt in immeasurable ways. And a great slaughter has occurred among the people of God over the last 50 years. As our nation and nations in Europe have fallen into paganism and idolatry, anarchy is in our streets, immorality is everywhere, godlessness is everywhere, the rise of Satanism and witchcraft is on the increase, 60 million abortions in America, and we could go on and on and on. All of this is directly attributed to the fact that there were no, not no, there were very few faithful watchmen who 
blew the trumpet and warned God's people, giving God's people a time to rouse themselves and prepare to defend themselves. Now, there were some. I don't know what percentage, but there were some that were very faithful. But with isolated um, exceptions, they were ignored. They were mocked. They were ridiculed by these same leaders. The same leaders that refused to see what was happening and refused to blow the trumpet themselves didn't stop there. They actually mocked. They actually suppressed the true watchmen that were trying to be faithful. So when all is said and done, are not all these Christian leaders, all these denominations, all these churches, all these seminaries and Christian schools and Christian pastors, are they not accountable to God for the blood that has been spilt on God's people over the last 50 years? The answer is, of course, they're accountable. But the greater problem is there is little or no change today. Those that should be watchmen still don't blow the trumpet. They pretend there's no enemy, or they actually conform their theology to join the theology of the enemy. And God's people continue to be slaughtered. This is a horrible thing. But I've said it. I've been saying it for 30 years. However imperfect, my conscience is clean because I was faithful to blow the trumpet. I was faithful to sound the warning. And the slaughter is not on my hands. But I don't use that as an excuse to get out of the game. I keep doing what I'm doing, because that's what I've been called to do. So this is a problem that we have to address. And, you know, if you're listening, and you attend a church or an organization where you're, you're part of it, you're supporting it financially, uh, ministries or organizations that do not blow the trumpet and pretend that there is no enemy on the way. I want to remind you something, that you are complicit in the guilt of the, of the leaders that fail to function as watchmen. I'll say it again. Make no mistake about it. You are complicit. You, you will share in the guilt and the accountability completely. Because you chose to become one with, to empower, to participate with those that were unfaithful watchmen. You spent your money that God allowed you to make funding them. You empowered them through your volunteerism, your commitment, your attendance, and all the other things you did. So you will share in the accountability. You may say that's unkind, that's judgmental of you. You can say whatever you want. But ultimately, um, this will be a matter uh, where I will have nothing to do with it. It will be between you and the Lord, because every believer in Jesus Christ stands before the judgment seat of Christ, before he or she gets into heaven, and God gives an evaluation of what you've done down here on earth. You are rewarded for what you did that was right and good, and that where you failed and you did it for, you know, for, for self-centered reasons, don't think that the Lord doesn't notice. It will be, those things will be burnt up like wood, hay, and stubble. If you're truly born again, you will still get into heaven. But what you've done, there will be no rewards for, for the kinds of things that I'm saying it will be burnt up as wood, hay, and stubble. But out of God's mercy, if you're truly born again, you will still enter into the kingdom of heaven, but just like a man or a woman escaped at the last second while their house was burning down. That's sober, but you need to hear it. You're listening to the Paul McGuire Report on Paul McGuire. You can get more information at paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. 
And this is the beginning of giving you a prophetic update as to what God is doing in this nation and in nations across the world. I have many books for you with uh, bundle discounts at paulmcguire.us, tons of free YouTubes, the archives of this program, which you should send to people that need them, or you can hear them on any technology you uh, choose to, uh, simply by going to paulmcguire.us. And before I forget, by the way, there is, starting um, March 17th, this, this March 17th through the 19th, uh, the Red River Bible Prophecy Conference. And uh, I will be kicking off the conference, speaking at 9 a.m. on March 17th. It's being held at the Marriott Conference Center in Moorhead, Minnesota. But spread the word, because you can watch the conference, and all the other speakers. they got great speakers for free. And you can also, if you choose to physically attend the conference, for free. And that's a big deal because it's really expensive to put on a conference like this. And you can enjoy it and benefit from it anywhere in the world. Simply go to paulmcguire.us where you can see a big link that will take you to the uh, Red River Bible Prophecy Conference. Are we living in the last days? And it's free live streaming. So you want to get connected to that. Don't wait till the last minute. It starts promptly at 9 a.m. Um, on March 17th. And uh, I'll be the kickoff speaker. I'll be speaking numerous times. And they have other excellent speakers and Bible prophecy teachers at the conference. And... Um, Looking for my notes as to the other speakers, which are, thank God I have the paperwork in front of me, Pastor Mike Hogard, tremendous Bible teacher, absolutely tremendous. Roger Oakland, an author with a powerful teaching ministry about what's really happening in the church today. Myself, Paul McGuire, and Chris Pinto, uh, a Christian filmmaker, but uh, also an author and these are the kind of speakers that they don't pull any punches. So you need to take advantage of the live streaming and do more than that. Pass the word about the free live streaming. People can, can tune in free all over the world. People say, well, I can't afford a conference. I can't do this. I can't. I don't care where you live on planet Earth. You can watch the live streaming for free and simply go to paulmcguire.us and you'll see... Uh, a big link for the conference, and that will tell you how to hook up, or if you can physically get there, uh, admission to the conference is free. So that's amazing. Really, it really is. And let me give you my schedule, by the way. 9 a.m. Friday, March 17th, and this is Moorhead, Minnesota time, so I don't know what time zone that's in. I'll be speaking promptly at 9 a.m. on America and One World Globalism. Uh, I'll be speaking at 4 p.m. Friday, March 17th on uh, Orwell's 1984 and Censoring the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Then uh, I'll be speaking at 10.30 a.m. Saturday, March 18th, God's Call Upon His Church in the Last Days. And then um, I'm speaking another time. I don't know when. I'll look it up. Oh, 8 p.m., uh, Saturday, March 18th, The Secret Rule of Planet Earth by the Luciferian Elite. And then I'll also be speaking Sunday, March 19th, uh, with the other speakers at, at like a forum. So this will be powerful. Uh, people let it rip. But spread the word. Go to paulmcguire.us, and you can find out about the free live streaming and the... How to get there, free attendance, and really spread the word, because most of the time this costs big bucks. And I, I think this is the fourth year I've spoken there, and it's always tremendous. It's powerful teaching. I'm talking about deep, rich Bible teaching and the power of God. Now, let's get back into this uh, 
But really, spread the word about that because I get emails all the time from people who say, well, I'd love to come to, to one of your conferences, but I can't afford to. Or, you know, I'd love to do the live streaming, but I can't afford to. Well, you know, we hear you, and it's not always possible. You know, but I know the brothers in this ministry, and uh, uh, they're sensitive to the, those concerns. It's not always possible, but they decided to do it for free live streaming and conference attendance. So, you know, this is rare. Take advantage of it and tell others. Because a lot of people don't get any good Bible teaching anywhere. So let's talk about what God is doing prophetically in the United States and around the world, because it's critical that you understand. And by the way, you should take advantage of all the free resources at paulmcguire.us. Um, we have... Uh, bundle discounts on my books. My books go into de deep detail about the subjects that I'm talking about, the quotes from the people I mentioned, the documentation from the quotes, and uh, all kinds of connected areas, books like A Prophecy of the Future of America, The Day <clears throat> the, day the Dollar Died, um, Standing Down Goliath, dealing with transhumanism in the Bible. Um, the Warning, which is a fictional novel of what happens in America if it goes under martial law and people are forced to take a microchip implant. That's called The Warning that I wrote. Then the book Mass Awakening, which deals with the fact that either America will have an authentic biblical revival and biblical awakening, but if God's people refuse to humble themselves before the Lord, then we will have, as I explained in my book, Mass Awakening, a satanic awakening in our nation. And then a brand new book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, 2016-2017. This is very important because it outlines what happened in America in 2016, but it also outlines how... 2017 is going to play out, and you need to know that because in the book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, 2016-2017, I um, teach from the scripture how God can enable you to survive, be an overcomer, and even prosper. I'm not talking about self-indulgent prosperity, but prosper, and how you can defeat the adversary. Because, you know, Lucifer gives his children all kinds of wisdom, but God's people don't take advantage of God's wisdom. And uh, in that book, I share wisdom from the scripture about how you can be an overcomer and you don't have to enter panic or fear. There's a four DVD set that goes with it, A Prophecy of the Future of America 2016-2017, the four DVD set, and the brand new DVD set uh, produced after the election, America, what's going to happen next? Because you need to know what's going to happen next. You're listening to the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us. We'll be back in a second. You're listening to the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. By the way, people are confused all over the place. <clears throat> America, what's happening in America is of critical importance because it's literally affecting the entire world. And as I said before, I'm not here to make a partisan political comment. This isn't even a political comment anyway. It's a spiritual comment, and its intention is not to favor one political party over another. But never before in my lifetime have I ever seen the masks come off the media the way they have. Not just only in the U.S., but I see it happening in the European Union also. Now, I always knew the media was lying. I mean, from, from childhood. <laughs> it's rather sad. Uh, the mainstream media has always been lying. Constantly. And a lot of people knew that, but it's one thing to know it and then see living proof when they take off their masks and they expose to you who they really are and what their hidden agenda is. And, and they, at least in the past, they faked being uh, uh, having journalistic ethics. They faked it. Now they threw away even the pretense of journalistic ethics. And they show themselves for what they are. And this is what 
everyone needs to know about the media. I mean, you have to know this. If you don't know this, you can't learn. You can't be educa educated. And you'll have no idea what's going on. The media, when I say the media, I'm talking about the mainstream media. <clears throat> the mainstream media has not been telling you the truth for forever. The mainstream media can't tell you the truth. That's what you have to understand. And the reason it can't tell you the truth is despite all the chest thumping about how they're here to <clears throat> tell us the truth, they can't because the, the media is totally controlled by a secret globalist elite. Therefore, they can't tell you the truth. Everything the mainstream media does is designed to promote or tell the lies or the propaganda that the secretive global elite want told. So once you know that, you should never even think for a moment you're being told the truth by the mainstream media. <clears throat> because the mainstream media is controlled by just 16 corporations. And those 16 corporations that control the mainstream media are controlled by the secretive global elite. So the secret global elite control the 16 corporations that control all the information and the news and content in the mainstream media. That's a fact. That's why you can never hear the truth from the mainstream media. You have to understand that how big their smiles are, how much Botox they got, how expensive their outfits are, how majestic their sets are, the smiles, the way they move. You know, it's like actors. They're trained. They, they, they sit in front of mirrors and they train themselves or get coaches to come off likable and learn how to smile and look, learn how to be natural. They spend a fortune on their wardrobe and the lighting and the makeup and the, the plastic surgery and the Botox and all that stuff because without that, they would look like ordinary people. You see, people um, have uh, this tendency to confer authority, power, knowledge on people who look better than themselves who dress better than themselves, who speak better than themselves, and who project themselves in a superior manner. There's something about human nature that people subconsciously elevate uh, people in the news media as being authority figures. But the elevation is not based on a legitimate basis. In other words, people are not elevating these people because they're what they're saying is actually true. They're not elevating them because the people are actually more educated and knowledgeable, or they're not elevating them because they have a proven track record of integrity, and they're not elevating them because they think they have some kind of inside track to the truth. No, <clears throat> the media is show business. The mainstream news media is show business. It's all based on illusion. And illusion, by the way, is sorcery. It's based on illusion and props. If you put somebody in a palatial set that costs like a million dollars to build, you know, this magnificent set, and then you dress somebody in a very expensive tailored designer suit or dress, and then they have the very best of haircuts, the very best makeup artists, and then... Uh, they have all these ways to lose weight, etc. And then they have um, uh, injections in their face so they look far younger than they are. And then they have cosmetic surgery. Okay, these are all props. So what happens is you, 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 you can literally place a geek, a geek. You literally place a geek, a nerd, or uh, uh, somebody who's not all that bright, but you give them the right wardrobe, the right haircut, the right makeup, the right cosmetic surgery, and then you put them in this palatial set that resonates power, and then you light them so that when they come on camera, they look almost godlike. You don't understand the power of lighting. Lighting can make diminish someone, or lighting can enhance somebody to like a godlike status. 
And so when you see them, they look larger than life. They look more attractive, more important, more intelligent, but it's all fake. It's an illusion. And so millions of Americans and Europeans then just uh, act as if these people are kings or queens and take their directions from them. They, they, they follow what these people say like it's the truth, not based on content, not based on any actual knowledge, based on smoke and mirrors and the magical performance of the lighting and the makeup and the wardrobe and the set. Now, <clears throat> this is an age-old trick, by the way. <clears throat> and they get away with it because most Americans really are gullible and easily led, the same in other nations. So they, they, even though they lie, even though the mainstream media is constantly lying, constantly lying, has been for decades, they not only lie by what they say, the bigger way they lie is but by what they choose not to say or what they choose not to cover as news. In fact, the biggest lying that goes on in the mainstream media is really in the area of what they choose not to say and what they choose to ignore as news. Okay, it's very important that you understand that and fully understand it. I was in the media for many years. I appeared on the biggest cable news network shows in the world, regularly debating. I'm talking about the biggest shows, constantly. <clears throat> uh, primar primarily on Fox News Network, but also on CNN. And by the grace of God, I was a very, very good debater. In fact, I never lost a debate, ever. And I had... I, I had stuff rigged against me. They would cut the sound off. They would put the camera on my opponent, believe me, okay? And um, that was the grace of God. So, so I learned, though. I studied it because I used to be an independent feature film producer. My wife was an actress, so I didn't walk in like, you know. I understood the rules of the game, and therefore, uh, without sounding like I'm bragging, I came off at the same level or higher than they did because I knew the rules of the game and I, I you know, you, you can't, you have to, can't go around the rules. You have to dress right, look right, et cetera, et cetera, which I did. But I know how the game is played. And I've talked to some of these people privately. Now, here's, here's the, the, the point to remember though. When you study, which I have, in detail, things like psyops, psychological, psychological operations, <clears throat> where you 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 win a battle uh, in the area of the mind in people. And by the way, the media is used for the purpose of psyops and propaganda and indoctrination, just like the school system was under John Dewey. But what you have to understand is that one of the basics in psyops. And remember, PSYOPs is based on illusion. And if you go f far enough back to Mystery Babylon and uh, the Pharaoh God King system, which I explain in my book, Far um, um, A Prophecy of the Future of America, and uh, Mass Awakening, and the second Prophecy of the Future of America, 2016-2017, the Babylon Code, um, and numerous other books, I talk about sorcery, illusion, and magic. And one of the things occultists and magicians and sorcerers will tell you is that when you're manipulating people's minds, which is mind control, and mind control goes way back to, to ancient Egypt and Babylon. When you're manipulating people's minds, you, you, you also employ things like <clears throat> physical architecture, physical structures, physical symbols, like television set, a television sets by a set, I don't mean the box, I mean like the giant set that the newsman sits in, you know, with all the monitors and, and, and seats and stuff. That's a set. It's like a theatrical produ production. So in magic and illusion and sorcery and psyops in mind control, you manipulate the symbolism and the props, okay? which is what I was just talking about, lighting, makeup, Botox, ties, voice, camera angles, 
the majestic set, et cetera, et cetera. What this does subconsciously to the average individual is that below the surface of their conscious mind, because mind control operates below the surface of the conscious mind, you are programming the viewer subconsciously to believe that these news women and newsmen on these palatial sets and stuff are are larger than life. They're, they're authorities. See, you're, you're programming the subconscious viewer that the people that you're watching, that they are the authorities. You, ne- you may not believe that consciously, but you do believe it subconsciously because that's where uh, mind control operates and sorcery operates. So the manipulation of physical objects, the attire that people wear, uh, the smoke and mirrors, you know, the visual effects, the graphics, the music, Ancient occultists, mag- magicians, and sorcerers did all those things back then. You have to understand this. I'm, I'm not talking about, this is not some like side issue I'm talking about. This is getting into the, to the hardcore truth about how minds are manipulated and controlled through mind control. It's an ancient occult science that goes back to Mystery Babylon. <clears throat> In fact, it is the essence of Mystery Babylon. Because when you understand what Mystery Babylon really is, it is the epitome of a Luciferian world system. But the purpose of Mystery Babylon, and you really should know this subject, that's why I encourage you to read my books on it, because I've devoted a lifetime to studying it. The, 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 the essence of Mystery Babylon, which you need to know what the essence is, is about... Two things. It's about a Luciferian world system and giving the secret occult Luciferian elite, the men and women who have chosen to worship Lucifer, it's about giving them total power and total control over the masses of humanity by creating an occult supernatural control system called Mystery Babylon where you program the masses into being the slaves of this uh, secretive elite of God kings that are serving Lucifer. That's what this is all about, programming the masses. It started in Mystery Babylon. It carries on today. Why do you think that when Adolf Hitler would make those speeches, and you know that black and white news footage, Adolf Hitler would stand in a, in a massive or, or a stadium or or a uh, uh, auditorium or an outdoor stadium, Adolf Hitler would you'd see like it looked like a million people lined up to watch him, and Hitler would stand up on a pedestal, uh, dressed in his Nazi uniform, and he would you know hand motions and speak with great authority, and behind him were these Roman. It looked like he was standing. Uh, in front of like a giant Roman uh, uh, castle or the the, 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 the the head of the empire. And then you would see these enormous Nazi flags in red draped down, you know, really long. And it was like this massive cathedral that Hitler was standing in. The music was perfectly timed to amplify the message. The people would go hysterical and weep and faint. And then you look at the old black and white news footage and you'd see you know, tens of thousands of people saying, Sig, Sig Heil, Sig Heil, as they were doing that you know, upraised uh, open palm salute to Hitler. What was that about? Hitler worked with Hitler was put in power by the secret occult societies of Nazi Germany. The secret occult societies of Nazi Germany were not only Satanists, they knew the principles of satanic mind control. So his, the people that he surrounded himself with, like Joseph Goebbels, was the minister of propaganda. Propaganda is, is how you use uh, television, film, radio, paintings, posters to and speeches to program people's minds. And Goebbels and his other high-level advisors, uh, who were experts on human mind control, 
deliberately set up every aspect of these mass speeches that Hitler gave. The giant flags, the the Roman columns, the thousands of people watching them. None of this was by accident. It was staged. It was theatrical. It was theater. And it was designed, listen carefully, it was designed to make Hitler appear like a god and an authority figure so the people would follow Hitler like a messiah and it works. That's what sorcery, mind control, magic, and the occult can do, you see. The people literally thought Hitler was a god. But that was manipulated by by the various things I discussed. In the same manner, a television production, production or a political speech can manipulate people into mind control. You have to understand that. Now, I explain this, and I break it down, and I give quotes by Hitler's propaganda ministers. I give quotes by, like, Edward Bernays, the father of modern advertising He's the man in the 20s who, de- who devised the advertising campaign to convince women to smoke cigarettes by brainwashing them into thinking smoking cigarettes made them sexually attractive and more beautiful. He was so powerful with his advertising genius, which was really indoctrination, uh, that Adolf Hitler used his ideas to brainwash the masses. Mind control experts. Mind controls used in advertising, political messages, etc. So the the mainstream media is using this system of illusions to to do the same thing that happened in Mystery Babylon, to keep the people into captivity and to keep them under mind control without them knowing it. That's the key with mind control, is you don't let people know how powerful it is. So in my books, I document it. I give the quotes, <clears throat> the, the first-hand quotes, the documentation, and you will see, like in Mass Awakening and the other books, irrefutable proof about how this works. I go into great detail, and you'll understand what is being done in our society. Now, this is what is critically important to understand in terms of proce- prophecy and where we are in America and Europe and the rest of the world. We live in a Luciferian world system. Part of the control mechanism of a Luciferian world system is called Mystery Babylon, which involves mass mind control to create a race of willing slaves who don't even know they're slaves. The mainstream media is one of the primary mechanisms of doing that. So isn't it interesting that the mainstream media and this is also part of scientific mind control and propaganda, they very carefully crafted a term called fake news, which the very term fake news is mind control, in which anything that doesn't agree with the official position of the mainstream media, which is inherently dishonest, is labeled artificially as fake news. Now, that's a mind control technique, and it works. And then they take it further. They actually pass laws, just like in a dictatorship, where they are starting to, with increasing frequency, censor any voice, any website, (coughs) any communication, which uh, tells the truth. And they call it fake news. Is it fake news because it's not true? No, it's fake news because it disagrees with their truth, which is based on a lie. Now, admittedly, there are fake news sites by lunatics, but, but, but that has nothing to do with the, with the news sites that they're attacking. This is a power struggle because the globalist elite control the mainstream media. And so what's happening with Trump is he's being attacked. Why is this president being attacked by every single mainstream media news organization in a manner we've never seen before? Lie after lie. The Russians did this. I mean, there's these preposterous lies, just outrageous lies. And guess what? Lies work. Hitler taught us that. I explained it in Mass Awakening. It's called the big lie. This bombardment of lies, like, you know, the Russians uh, interfered with the election. That's a complete lie. It's designed with the hope of a regime change. 
So he's being attacked. And what is the reason he's being attacked? Because he is a threat to their system, which is designed for the benefit of the globalists. All of these trade treaties that have been passed <clears throat> in the last 25 or more years in America and the European Union have, listen to me carefully, <clears throat> because I've been talking about trade treaties and Bible prophecy long before anybody talked about it. And people would, would look at me like I was crazy for talking about it. Like, what do trade treaties have to do with Bible prophecy? So in 2005, I wrote my book, Are You Ready?, which is all about trade treaties, the European Union, NAFTA, GATT, the North American Union, and what the purpose of the trade treaties were for in terms of Bible prophecy, one world government. So, so all these trade treaties that the Republicans were behind and the Democrats were behind, like NAFTA and GATT and WTO, they were designed, listen carefully, they, the, the Republican leaders and presidents and the Democratic leaders and presidents came before the cameras, I remember it clear as yesterday, and lied to the American uh, public and told them that if we pass these trade treaties, there would be many more high-paying jobs in America, our manufacturing would boom, new jobs would boom, and we would, we would all become wealthier because of all the new business that would be generated through these trade treaties. That's what they told us, and that's what the media told us, and the media never questioned the official story. They promoted it. All of it was a lie. It was not an accident that the trade treaties failed. These men knew it was going to fail. The trade treaties were never designed from day one to be for the benefit of the working class or middle class in America or any other nation. They were designed exclusively to enrich the globalist elite at the expense of making the middle class and working class poor. So it should have been no surprise that uh, as a number of years, a few short years began to go by, that we began to see the result of the trade treaties. And we still see the result of the trade treaties today, including the current trade treaties that are attempting to be passed. What we have seen is what the outcome of the trade treaties are. The middle class uh, standard of living has crashed to an all-time low. The working class standard of living has cr crashed to an all-time low. And the same in the European Union. It, it, it hit us. It destroyed the economy for the middle class and the working class. So the trade treaties essentially basically destroyed the middle class and the working class. It wasn't an accident. It was by design. Because at the exact same time, the middle class and working class were having all their monies sucked out of their bank accounts by the trade treaties, very conspicuously, the secretive globalist elite, or the 1%, the super wealthy and the super rich, they began to make more money than they ever had before in the history of mankind. So we see two things going on simultaneously, which proves that that was not accidental. The middle class and the working class are getting poorer and poorer and poorer, while at the exact same time, the 1% are getting richer and richer and richer and richer more than they ever had in human history. That was by design. The purpose of the trade treaties was to make the secret globalist elite filthy, stinking rich. And it's still what it's about today. So Trump comes along and he believes in something that the secret globalist elite hates. He believes in an independent sovereign nation state. He believes in the concept of independent nations. Why? Because that, whether Trump is a Christian or not, and I don't think that he is a Christian, it happens to be a biblical principle. Now, you won't hear this in your average church because um, they have been scientifically dumbed down. They, don't, they, they can't disciple anybody because they don't know how to apply the Bible to anything. And so the question I have to ask you is, what are you doing in these churches? Your faith is being robbed. There's no anointing of the Holy Spirit. You can walk into the sanctuary and literally not feel the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord picked up and walked out of the sanctuary where you claim to be worshiping, 
worshiping God in 10 years ago. What's wrong with you? Do you have so little spiritual discernment? Is the Holy Spirit even alive and well in you? How come you don't notice the Spirit of God has departed the sanctuary and uh, uh, messages that your pastor is giving? I mean, really, if you're walking in a supernatural relationship with God and you walk into a sanctuary where the presence of the Lord is gone, somebody who's walking with Jesus knows that instant, instantly. You can feel it. It's like being hit with, a, <clears throat> with this force. When you're walking in the supernatural power of God and reading his word and you're, you hear a, a pastor preach a message where the anointing of the Holy Spirit is, is not on that message, you know it instantly. So, so there's got to be something seriously wrong in the spirits of Christians that are perfectly content to go to churches where the Spirit of God walked out of those churches 15, 20 years ago. So, if the church was teaching the truth as it's commanded to, if it was teaching the Bible as it was commanded to, you would have been taught not once, you would have been taught countless times because it's such an important truth. <clears throat> the entire account from the inspired and inerrant Word of God in the book of Genesis, which deals with the story of the Tower of Babel and ancient Babylon. God didn't put that in there because he was bored. There's a powerful message in there that applies to today's time. But you wouldn't know what that message is <clears throat> if you're going to a church that doesn't teach the Bible. And then the other question I'd have to ask you is, if God's Word is the inspired and errant Word of God, which it is, why is it that you're comfortable in attending a church, worshiping a church, volunteering in a church, and donating to a church, where the Word of God in its entirety is not being taught, and many parts of the Word of God that are extremely important <clears throat> are actually being censored from you. Why are you comfortable in a church like that? I'm going to ask it again. Why are you comfortable in a church that censors the Word of God and refuses to teach various sections of the Word of God? And I don't want to hear the excuse. Well, you know, our leadership has decided that, you know, these are too controversial and we won't be able to win people to Jesus Christ if we frighten them with Bible prophecy. Okay, if you believe that, and you continue to go to a church which is telling you that, you have a serious problem. You have leadership who believe that they are more intelligent than God, even though they have finite minds. So they look down upon God's word, and they decide in their finite human intelligence that they're smarter than God, and as such, they decide to censor God's word because in their human wisdom, they believe <clears throat> people will be frightened away or whatever. Why is that acceptable to you? God's word is the inspired and errant word of God. Why would you go to a church where the pastors and the leaders have decided they're smarter, to God, smarter than God and censor his word? I'm not going to even continue that because that's such a ludicrous proposition. I can't continue it. And then you wonder why God doesn't answer your prayers. You wonder why you don't see any miracles. You wonder why nobody seems to be getting saved in your lives. You wonder why all these things about God, you think falsely that God has disappeared. Well, you're partially right. God has disappeared. <clears throat> he hasn't disappeared out, out of the world of the universe, but he has disappeared from the sanctuary where you worship. So why would you continue to go to a sanctuary where God isn't even there? Now, in the book of Genesis, which is the inspired and inerrant word of God, we read something very interesting in Genesis 11. We read an account of what is called the Tower of Babel. God put it in there to warn us, because the story of Babylon is the story of the world's first one-world government, one world religion, and one world economic system, which is what the New World Order wants, which is what the media wants, which is what <clears throat> um, um, the globalists want. 
And it is also the very reason why Trump is being attacked, because Trump it believes in independent nation states, whereas in the account of Babel, there are no independent nation states. It's simply a global system with no independent nations. And so you and people like people like yourself, you think it's great that we do away with independent nation states, because that, after all, is the cause of all war and man's problems. The only problem with your belief is completely opposite of what the scripture teaches. God looked down upon ancient Babylon, which was a one world government, one world religion, and one world economic system. And he judged it. He judged it by confusing their languages and scattering them across the earth. So what was God's response to the world's first one world government, one world religion, and one world economic system? also known as the New World Order, a counterfeit of the kingdom of God. God's response is that he judged it because God could discern what their real inner motivation was. And the inner motivation of the people of Babylon was this. They wanted to be like God, the sin of Satan, <clears throat> and that they secretly were worshiping Lucifer through his Luciferian system. So God understood that in the hearts and minds of mankind at ancient Babylon, the world's first one world government, that it was really a Luciferian system and the people wanted to be like God. That's why God judged it. Got it? Now, here we are in our time period and the secretive globalist elite and the media they control and the politicians they own and put in power and the trade treaties that they have created are all, and the global economic system that they're attempting to, to implement and the global religion that they're attempting to implement, the secretive occult globalist elite are using all their power to bring about the return of Babylon again. And yet, there's a big problem. Because in ancient Babylon, we learn from what God did is that when you erect a world where you get rid of all the borders and you don't have independent sovereign nation states, just one big, one world new order, one world government, no borders, because what defines an independent nation state? The fact that it has borders. <clears throat> so you think that's great. The problem is God in the book of Genesis, where he warned mankind about the judgment of anything like Babylon, God judged it because he knew that it was Luciferian in nature, and in the hearts of men and women, they wanted to be like God. So the Babylon that's rising in our time, also known as the New World Order, and this coming one world government, one world religion, and one world economic system, is guaranteed to usher in a Luciferian system and horrible sin. Why? Because that's what happened in ancient Babylon. And also because <clears throat> the Bible tells us this will happen. Because the Bible tells us in Revelation 17 and 18 that in the last days, mystery Babylon will return. So this one world government, one world religion, and one world economic system is going to return headed up by the Antichrist, a false Christ who is the head of the one world government, headed up by the false prophet who is the head of a one world satanic religion, and headed up by the false prophet who is head of a one world economic system with the mark of the beast and the cashless society. <clears throat> so, we see that one of the ways God has protected man since the beginning of time, is it has been God's will that men and women uh, exist and flourish inside separate individual nations. And that's a God thing. And that the nations are supposed to have separate independent borders. So all this laughter, <coughs> attack, and mockery against Trump, by the mainstream media, by the globalists, by the globalist entertainers, by the globalist, all the voices that are attacking and writing negative things about uh, Trump, the secret agencies that are attacking Trump, 
all work for the globalists. And their plan in America in high speed has been to destroy this any idea of patriotism or nationalism beginning a hundred years ago. There's been a full uh, scale plan to destroy that. So Trump comes along and says, I believe in America. I believe that, that we should make an independent sovereign nation state great again. The globalists hate that. They don't want America great. They want America to be artificially pulled down to the level of all the other third world dictatorship nations. They don't want America to be an example. They want to kill it. And so the very idea of a border, the very idea of a wall that would ensure a border arouses the hatred of the globalists who are part of this return of Babylon. Don't you see it? It's, it's, so, it's so obvious. So even though he himself is not a Christian and probably doesn't understand the biblical implications of what he's got himself involved in, that's what he's involved in. Because God knows that borderless countries merged together in a one-world government always produces a Luciferian system. That's why he warned about it. That's what Genesis 11 is all about, if you bother to read it. And that's what Revelation 17 and 18 is all about, if you bother to read it. And that's why God characterizes in the book of Revelation, if you bother to read it, uh, that Babylon is a whore. Mystery Babylon is the great harlot and that she fornicates with the power elite of the earth. And God judges mystery Babylon. God's not happy with the rise of Babylon again. God treats the rise of Babylon that's coming now just like he treated it in Genesis 11. He's going to judge it and destroy it. That's why it says, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. God is going to destroy in his judgment Babylon as it rises again. So this entire plan... That's what they call it with a capital P, of the Luciferian elite who head up the New World Order and their one world government and their one world religion and their one world economic system is designed as a rebellion from God. It's the sin of Lucifer. They want to be gods. And that's why God's going to destroy their Babylon. And to, it, in case that isn't clear enough for you, it's not an accident that the, when Babylon rises again, in this one world government, there's a mark of the beast where you're forced to renounce Jesus as Lord and accept the Antichrist as God in order to get the mark of the beast. There's a Antichrist that heads up the one world government, and there's a false prophet that heads up the one world religion and the one world economic system. That's why the globalists want to get rid of cash and give you a chip implant. That's why they discussed it at the Bilderberg Group meeting. Now, this is the knowledge you get when you bother to read the Bible. Is it politically correct? No. But is it true? Yes. So that's where we are. That's why there's an all-out assault to attack this man. And whether he was a Democrat or a Republican, we need to pray for all those in authority above us. That means we're supposed to pray for all the Democrats. You say, why pray for the Democrats? Because... You know, calling Democrats names and attacking them cannot change their hearts, okay? If you want to change their hearts, you need to go into the throne room of God and pray for them. God can deal with people. You cursing at people, I mean, it may give you a temporary release, but it's not going to change anything. And you need to pray for the Republicans and the Democrats. And you need to pray for all in authority above us, because ultimately... We're not fighting a physical battle. We're fighting a spiritual battle. And that spiritual battle is law-abiding and peaceful. But we're used to, to use the weapons of our warfare that are mighty through God to the pull of pulling down strongholds. Now, I hope you got this because this is exactly what's playing out in uh, the European Union. Look what's happening in the European Union. Just about every head... And, the, and you need to spread this far and wide among your friends in Europe, by the way. I've traveled to Europe. I've talked on Bible prophecy. There is a remnant that loves Jesus in Europe. But I'm telling you, if you think America is bad, good grief. 
the, the European Union, man, you guys are in a trance state because you rejected Christ earlier than we do. I mean, we're going to catch up to you. It's not a pride thing. We're going to catch up to you in being a trance state. In New Zealand and Australia, too, most of you people are in a trance state, just like we are. But the people who are the heads of your government in Europe are put there by the globalist elite. Why do you think Angela Merkel, I don't even remember who the current head of France is, is it Sar Sarkovsky or whatever, or is that the previous head of France? I don't know, but I read some ridiculous quote from this man, which was like, he's a globalist. The, the people that currently rule France are globalist puppets. Angela Merkel is a globalist puppet. All these heads, these prime ministers and heads of the various European nations are globalist puppets. They're there to do the bidding and the will of the secret, wealthy, globalist elite. They have deliberately opened your borders on purpose. If you're so dumb that you think that your borders are open out of love and compassion for people, then, and then I, I, you know, I, I, you're hopelessly stupid. You're hopelessly stupid. And I don't mean that to insult you. I just don't know what to say. Your borders aren't open because of love and compassion. If you wanted to have love and compassion, you could open your borders. Or you could open borders right down there near Syria, because all around Syria are massive, empty acres of land where all these Syrian refugees, through the endless bucks of the UN and the European Union, whoever, they could construct very, very nice housing and, and erect almost overnight very nice cities for all these millions of refugees to safely stay. Right across the border from Syria, there's these giant Muslim nations. Let them settle down there. Why, why are, look at a map. Why would you ship people all the way through Turkey, all the way up from Syria, all the way up through Turkey, <clears throat> all the way up through Europe, and, and, and force them into all these European nations? It doesn't make any logistical sense or financial sense. And then why would you ship them across the world to America? It's because it has nothing to do with love and compassion. You, you only believe it has something to do with love and compassion if you've been brainwashed and you don't have a brain left. It has to do with deliberately destroying your social cohesion. It has to do with deliberately fragmenting whatever's left of the European, Judeo-Christian, social, moral, religious, belief, and cultural system. It's about, shat listen to me, whether it's America or Europe, the reason uh, the migrants are flooding into your borders is because the secretive globalist elite <clears throat> want to destroy even the memory left of the various European civilizations, whether it's Italy, France, Germany, or whatever, Sweden, Norway, want to destroy it. Why do they want to destroy it? Because they don't want the people to have any memory or cultural identification with the nation that they were born in. They want Italians to forget they were ever Italians, British to ever forget that they were British, Germans to, to forget forever they were Germans. Because that's how you build a one world government. They're doing the same thing in the US, just slower. That's how you build a one world government. In fact, listen carefully, <clears throat> one of the keys of, of ancient Babylon <clears throat> was that all the people of ancient Babylon, <clears throat> excuse me, spoke a common language. So they were one. On, on, on the symbols of your European Union posters and banners and on the architecture of the European Union uh, headquarters, on all these European Union symbols, like the European Union headquarters, <clears throat> the Luciferians, 
that were high up and who planned for the European Union, de- de- deliberately designed the headquarters of the European Union to be a modern architecture version of the Tower of Babel, which tells you what their motives are. It's to build Babylon again. That's why the European Union headquarters is a modern architecture steel building that represents the Tower of Babel. They know what they're doing. And then many of the flags <clears throat> and posters of the European Union show, for example, on the, on the right-hand side, the modern architecture version of the Tower of Babel. And on the left-hand side, a classical painting which shows the original Tower of Babel. So you have the original Tower of Babel put right next to the modern architecture version of the Tower of Babel. You also have posters where you have that symbolism and then the stars. And then what does it say? Something like uh, many voices, one nation or something. Well, that has to do with the various languages turning into one. The Tower of Babel again, Babylon again. So when you, when you force in all these migrants, <clears throat> it's just a matter of time till you force the people to learn a common language adopt a common culture and common belief systems, and then you've built Babylon again. It's not an accident that in front of the European Union headquarters, you have a statue that comes right out of the Book of Revelation, which is a metallic statue of a woman riding a beast. The woman represents the... uh, uh, one world religion, but the woman represents the great harlot, which is Mystery Babylon, the female, the mother goddess. The woman, the harlot, because Babylon is a harlot or a whore, is riding the beast. The beast is the one world governmental structure headed up by the Antichrist. The founders of the European Union fully know this, so their plan is to turn the world in the European Union into Babylon, once again, for the purposes of total control. The people at the very top of the New World Order, at the very, very high places, they know this because they're worshiping Lucifer. They're Luciferians. Now, so you allow your, your nation to be destroyed. You allow your women to be raped in public. You allow yourself to be unarmed victims of bombings and terrorist attacks. You think that's going to go away? No, it's not going to go away. And by the way, it's not intended to go away. It's it's done according to the game plan of the New World Order, which is order out of chaos. You first create the chaos, and then you create the order. The order is the, the new global government of the European Union. You use the Hegelian dialectic. You have the radical Muslims on one end of the spectrum, antithesis. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you have the various uh, European nations. That's thesis. And then you take the antithesis, which is the radical Islamic types. And then you take the thesis on the other end of the spectrum, which is the Europeans. But the design from the beginning is you force them into a common middle zone called synthesis, which is globalization. So that's, that's, that's how it goes. Now, you know, instead of being dumb, you need to educate yourself. You need to learn. You need to get up to speed and you need to educate others because the time is coming quickly, by the way, when these big brother governments will shut down all forms of free communication. And it'll only be politically correct communication. Everything else will be outlawed or illegal. So I encourage you to to send the links of my radio programs at paulmcguire.us. Take advantage of all the free articles, thousands of pages at paulmcguire.us. Take advantage of uh, all the radio programs in the archives for free. The book bundles are very helpful. You know, every time we send books to the European Union and we get lots of people ordering from the European Union, I'll be honest with you, it's very, very difficult. It helps a lot of people, but it's difficult because by the time you pay for the uh, excessive shipping costs and all the packaging 
And I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Somebody in Europe doesn't want our books distributed because they seem to get lost a lot at the European Union post offices. And I smell a rat. But even though we lose money by sending you books, we're willing to do it because we're trying to give you information. So I have books that explain all this and more. But you've got to take advantage of it. If you don't take advantage of it, the time will come when it won't be available for you. <clears throat> Not because of me, but because of others. So get yourself a copy of A Prophecy of the Future of America because it deals with far more than America. It deals with the world. Get Mass Awakening. Get uh, The Day the Dollar Died. It deals far more than with the dollar. It deals with the coming cashless society and the one world currency. Get yourself a copy of Mass Awakening. It explains what's happening in your nation. And A Prophecy of the Future of America, 2016-2017, because it deals with far more than America. It deals with the global system. What's happening in America now is that we're the target. <clears throat> uh, people in high places don't like the fact that there are people in Europe that are trying to protect their independent sovereign nations. So you have the same globalist elite that controls the media in America controlling all the European Union media. And then you have these puppet politicians that are totally uh, put in power by the globalist elite. They don't care what you think. That, that's why they gave you the European Union. It was a stealth document. The whole purpose of the European Union was to con you like they conned us with our trade treaties. They lied to you and said it was harmless little treaties about trade, steel and coal, you know, little, little irrelevant things about how we can ship products and stuff. No, it wasn't. They snuck in secret language incrementally in all the drafts of the European Union documents. And by the time it was over, you woke up one day without realizing it, that they stole all your rights. And now you have to answer to a European Union. And you just can't use your voting power to get people unelected and stuff because you're dealing with a beast. And the beast is the European Union. So, you know, God has given us the time <clears throat> to, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, make disciples of all nations. That, that, that time is going to be more difficult. I was visiting Paris shortly after the uh, Charlie Hebdo attacks. And uh, I noticed, you know, all the historical monuments to the French Revolution. And uh, I couldn't help but notice that everywhere I looked, I, I saw the real, because I'm an expert in occult and Illuminati symbols, everywhere I looked, the, the, the monuments of the Enlightenment and the French Revolution in Paris, everywhere I looked, I saw the occult symbols of Babylon, everywhere. I saw evidence of the uh, Ra, the sun god, all over Paris. I saw the places where they had the uh, all-seeing eye of Lucifer in the uh, pyramid shape. And then I noticed that all this occult <clears throat> symbolism and monuments were placed on the exact same spot where they had the guillotines during the French Revolution and they chopped off many thousands of heads and spilt blood. Do you think that was an accident? All these Illuminati, occult, satanic symbols uh, in terms of statues and columns and buildings, do you think it was an accident that all these occult symbols happened to be in the exact same spot where they later erected the guillotines and chop people's heads off during the French Revolution and spilt their blood. You think that was an accident or a coincidence? I'll tell you what I think it was. I think it was a satanic blood occult sacrifice and that they deliberately put the guillotines on the same places where they had all the occult symbols to Satan. And when they, when they were actually chopping the heads off people during the French Revolution, it was far more than a method of education, uh, not education, it was far more than a method of uh, <clears throat> execution. It was actually a satanic blood sacrifice ritual. That's what I think. You need to read my books. You need to understand what's going on. 
You know, I'm concerned for Europe. I'm concerned for the United States. I'm concerned for the church that it's asleep. God is preparing to return to planet Earth again. I'm not here to argue about the rapture. I'm here to simply say that whatever you believe, God promises to return, and he will return to the second coming of Jesus Christ as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. The question is, will you be spiritually ready? Because if you accept Babylon, if you accept the mark of the beast, you're worshiping Lucifer. And the price tag for worshiping Lucifer is you will be sentenced into the abyss and lake of fire for all eternity. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior by faith, by inviting him into your life, asking him to forgive you of your sins, <clears throat> Jesus Christ will cleanse you with his blood and you will be born again and guaranteed entrance into the kingdom of heaven. The choice is yours, my European friends, my U.S. friends. The choice is yours. So, visit paulmaguire.us. That's paulmaguire.us. If you're in Europe or anywhere in the world, including the United States, I strongly recommend that you go to paulmaguire.us and link up to this Bible Prophecy Conference with free live streaming, where you can attend the conference for free, but free live streaming anywhere in the world. It begins Friday, March 17th, U.S. time. Um, Red River Bible and Prophecy Conference. Are we living in the last days? It begins Friday, March 17th. And it's being held in Moorhead, Minnesota. I speak at the opening session at 9 a.m. promptly on America and One World Globalization. I speak numerous times throughout the conference. There's other phenomenal speakers who deal with many of these issues. And the conference is Friday, March 17th, Saturday, March 18th, and Sunday, March 19th. Go to paulmcguire.us and link up for the live streaming free, especially those of you in the U.S. who can't make it and in Europe and around uh, the world because you're going to hear hours after hours of Bible teaching and explanations and answers that I guarantee you you won't hear at most churches in America and you won't, you won't hear them in Europe and most places. So take advantage of it. Usually they charge big bucks for this. It's free. And visit paulmcguire.us. We are <clears throat> very acutely aware of the fact that we're in the last days. And it is the mission of this ministry, Paul McGuire Ministries and Paradise Mountain Church. It is our mission to go into all the world, win souls for Jesus Christ, communicate these kind of biblical messages on Bible prophecy, make disciples of all nations, do kingdom business, <clears throat> bring in the last day's soul harvest. But we recognize, whether we're talking to Europe or New Zealand or Australia or America or Asia or South Africa or Africa or America or whatever, we realize that we're in a battle for the hearts and minds of mankind. And that means what we're really engaged in is a battle of belief systems. Many of the people you know and I know that they're just prejudiced, they're biased, they're blocked off from this. So the battle is in the mind. How do we get them to believe what we're teaching them? Well, we have to get rid of these lies that are in their head. You talk to the average person, they're so brainwashed, they think that a one world government's going to bring in utopia. Well, how do you deprogram them? How do you undo the mind control? You've got to have programs like this. So we are launching a television ministry because a lot of people are visual people. They have to see it in pictures and charts and videos. So we're launching a television ministry that will go into all the world in the United States to communicate these biblical messages and preach the gospel. We want to enhance this radio program. Uh, we want to enhance all of our social media outreaches, do live streaming from the Paradise Mountain Church services, have more conferences with free live streaming, um, Bible studies, and teaching. Uh, utilize all social media. And we have to diversify because there are powerful forces at work that want to censor all this stuff. 
So we need to, to, to be faithful with the time that the Lord has given us. So our goal is to use all of this media as fast as possible to reach people everywhere in the world and across the United States while we still can. So I'm asking you to pray for this ministry. Uh, pray for me, pray for my family, pray for the ministry. Engage in serious spiritual warfare on our behalf. Intercessory prayer, fasting, coming before the Lord and asking God to move and protect. And then I'm asking those of you that the Lord is blessed, I'm asking you to come to the Lord privately and ask God what you should give that will help us finance and pay for the costs of launching the television ministry, expanding the radio ministry, and expanding all the social media ministry, getting all the equipment we need. I'm asking you to go to the Lord Jesus Christ and simply ask him how much you should give, how much should you donate, and then simply obey the Lord. I'm not here to manipulate you. I'm simply saying go to the Lord, whatever he tells you to do, do. And there are people listening to me, and we're very thankful for every gift that comes to us, whether it's $15 in American dollars or $25 or $5,000 or whatever it is. Because we know whatever people give, they're giving what they can. And so we're thankful for that. But I realize because we're, we're, right now, many of you are listening in different places of America. Many of you are listening in different places of Europe and in different places of the, of the world. And all of you collectively can help by going to paulmcguire.us. Our address, by the way, is Paul McGuire, Paradise Mountain Church, 25876, The Old Road, number, um, I should look this up before I say it, The Old Road, number 136, 136, Stevenson Ranch, California, in the United States. That address is at paulmcguire.us, by the way. That is not the location of our the physical location of the church building. That's our mailing address. We have meetings on a regular basis locally at a hotel. Now, I realize I'm speaking to people all over the world, but some of you, the Lord is really blessed. And you know who you are. You, you have been privileged with a monetary blessing or financial blessing at a special level. And I want to appeal to you directly, as I'm appealing to all of you. You know, some of you that the Lord has blessed, uh, you think, well, gee, somebody else is going to do it. Somebody else will enable them to launch the television ministry. And the fact of the matter is, not all people are willing to, to give or support. So if you go before the Lord, and that's all I'm asking, and the Lord speaks to you about how much you should give, then I'm asking you, as your brother in Jesus Christ, to simply give and donate whatever God tells you to give. But we do need some big donations to put us over the top. It's expensive. And some of you, the Lord has blessed with that level of uh, resources. And then we constantly need people who are just regular faithful givers who give whatever amount. This is not about the money. I don't take money personally from book sales or things that the ministry offers. I don't get any of that personally. It goes into the ministry. I'm not getting wealthy off this, believe me. And I laugh because I'm tempted to, to video my lifestyle, but I, that would open me up to everybody. I'm not getting wealthy. I, I live like a middle-class American. That may be wealthy to you if you're in, in a third world nation, but as far as Americans go, I'm just an average guy. So help us. And, you know, we need you to partner with us spiritually, on a spiritual level. And by that I mean, I'm asking you to go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to, to fill you with the power of his Holy Spirit and set you on fire so you have a burden because God wants to use you in your family and in your individual nation, or your town, or your community, or your state, or your country. See, we are the body of Christ. All of us who, who 
have asked Jesus Christ to be our Savior and have the Holy Spirit inside of us are part of the supernatural body of Christ. Together, we're commanded to reach the world for Jesus. Would you join me in a prayer? And I'm asking every single person who's listening to me in America or whatever nation you're listening to me in, to not just listen to the prayer, but join us in prayer right now. And this is the reason why. Jesus Christ said, where two or more of us agree as to anything on earth, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. So we are the body of Christ. We may have different languages. We may come from different countries. But we're, if we've received Jesus Christ, we're all children of God. So let's come together in prayer because we know where two or more of us agree on earth is touching anything. It shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. So let's come to the Lord in prayer and ask God to move. And you can repeat my prayer out loud in your own language or however you choose to do it. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you now, God, praising your name. We thank you, God, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace to find an ever-present help in time of need, and that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us of all sin. So we come boldly into the throne of grace, Father. From all over the world, we unite in prayer, God, right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, as we agree, we ask in Jesus' name that at this very second, you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon countless numbers of people across the United States, in the European Union, and all across the world. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, pour out the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, let your people experience and receive the outpouring of your Spirit now, God. And Lord, I thank you that at this moment you are pouring out your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, that you're sending your angelic armies to protect this ministry and to protect all those that are joining us in prayer. You're sending your angelic armies to protect them. I thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, that you're sending your healing power to heal people. All the people that are praying are praying for somebody else. I thank you that your healing power is being released to heal people of all sicknesses and diseases in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that your power is removing depression and anxiety from people. And in Jesus' name, that fear is coming off people right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that the burdens of people's hearts, the things that are of heavy concern to them, prayers that they want to see answered. I thank you, Father, that right now in the name of Jesus, you are unlocking the doors and you are answering all those prayers that people have in their hearts right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that many people feel weak and they're, they're weary. But Lord, I thank you that right now that the Holy Spirit is filling people with power. At this very second, the Lord is filling you with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is filling you with the strengthening of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is filling you with the peace of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord wants you to know, he wants to say to you, to stop resisting the move of his Spirit. Lay down your pride and come to him like a little child with a mustard seed of faith, but lay down your pride so God can move. Lord, I thank you for breaking the yokes of oppression and the yokes of bondage off people right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that as we're praying together, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, that those people that are struggling against sin, that, Father, in the name of Jesus, you would give them the supernatural power right now in Jesus' name to break the chains of sin and set them free, God. Praise your name, Jesus. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you're anointing people, people who have financial needs, career needs, job needs, income needs, housing needs, medical needs. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would miraculously meet the needs of your people right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would pour out an anointing upon them 
so that they can share their faith in Christ, so that they can pray, so that they can uh, shine your light in the various nations and cities that they live in, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that the people who are seeking your face for wisdom and guidance and direction, I praise you, Father, that right now, in Jesus' name, the Lord is answering your prayer. He's giving you the supernatural guidance, the supernatural wisdom, and the supernatural plan that you need. Praise your name, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, God, that for those people who have been praying to God to open doors, and and they're frustrated, Lord, because the doors have not opened, I pray in Jesus' name, and I thank you, Lord, that right now in the name of Jesus, that the doors you want to be opened, Father, that you're opening right now in Jesus' name, to all those people who are gathering together with us in prayer, that you're supernaturally opening doors. I thank you, Lord, that for all people who are gathered with us in prayer, your supernatural covering of protection is upon each one of them and their families, no matter where they live. And we bind right now in the name of Jesus. We bind in Jesus' name all principalities and powers, In the name of Jesus, we dismantle and break all curses of witchcraft, Satanism, and the occult. We shatter those curses and break them in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that your angels are assigned to every person praying, God. Praise your name, Jesus. Lord, I pray, Father, that for all those joining in prayer all over the world, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that the Spirit of God would come upon you now unusually, that the Spirit of God would come upon unusually, that you would feel a stirring in your inner man or woman, that you would sense an aliveness, that you would sense the infusion of the power of the Holy Spirit, and that, that you would know, indeed, the Lord right now at this very second is supernaturally strengthening you, supernaturally empowering you, and supernaturally releasing you to minister to proclaim the gospel and to fulfill his will. You can't do it under under your own strength, so God is giving you his strength now. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, in Jesus' name, let the blessing of the Lord come upon each one of your people, way beyond anything they can ask or think, Lord. Let the blessing of the Lord be poured out upon every person now. In Jesus' name, amen. Visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. God bless you. I'm your brother in Christ, Paul McGuire. Stay strong in the faith. And visit paulmcguire.us.